Kyle Dubas could have made a trade tomorrow, Sunday, or Monday, but he decides to do it on the day where I have an assignment that's worth 20% of my grade due by midnight, and that's why I'm wearing this shirt, because in my previous assignment, my journalism professor told me that my attire was not professional enough. That's why it's buttoned all the way up to the top, because I refuse to wear a tie. So the trade is they're acquiring Riley Nash for a conditional seventh round selection. I think it has the possibility of upgrading to a sixth round pick if he plays in 50% of the games in the playoffs. But Riley Nash is injured four to six weeks, but it's really important to get the order of operations correct in this situation because it's going to determine how much more cab space the Toronto Maple Leafs have to work with. So if they made a recall to get close to the cap ceiling, they could then place Frederick Anderson on LTIR and then place Riley Nash on long-term injury reserve, which would give the Maple Leafs access to $5 million from Frederick Anderson and $2.75-ish million from Riley Nash. And if you're interested in some Riley Nash stats, I'll tack that on to the end of the video, but the salary cap situation is the more important thing here, so that's what we're going to cover. So Pierre Lebrun adds this, Freddie Anderson went on retroactive LTIR, and it's retroactive, I believe, to the day that the Toronto Maple Leafs started needing an emergency call-up goalie. The dates really don't matter as long as he's on LTIR for Monday, the trade deadline. But what this does is it buys us time on Frederick Anderson and still gives us the option to add at the deadline. To add a lot at the deadline, because Anderson makes $5 million bucks, Riley Nash makes $2.75 million, so that is $7.75 million in potential cap space. So I said that in the original video, if there was a correction to be made, I would make it and re-upload it, so that's what we're doing. So it doesn't quite free up $7.75 million in cap space, but it does allow them to exceed the salary by about $7.5-ish million, and those are two different things. And that's with a roster of about 18 players. Now that Fred is officially on LTIR, they cannot use a emergency call up to call up Michael Hutchison. So when they had three goalies on the roster before, Michael Hutchison was free. But now because they're using LTIR, they can't use an emergency call up in this situation. So Michael Hutchison would be costing you against the cap. So that gets you up to a roster of 19 players, but you're still missing a forward because remember, William Nylander is on the COVID protocol list, so they need to replace him. He's not on LTIR, he's on IR, and IR only frees up a roster spot. So they need another forward, and they'll more than likely just recall Alexander Barabanov, and since they're using LTIR, they can't use an emergency call-up to do that either, so he would count against the cap as well. So if you subtract Michael Hutchison's cap hit and Alexander Barabanov's cap hit, then that means they're really only left with about 4.2-ish million dollars in space to add players. So they could effectively afford Taylor Hall or players totaling up to about $8 million or so if they were to get 50% salary retained. It doesn't eliminate the need for a middle team there because if you can find a team to be the middleman in a Taylor Hall trade and retain another 50%, that's just smart, but they don't have to do that. They don't have to rely on doing that. So if the deadline comes and goes and the Maple Leafs don't do anything here, in order to activate Frederick Anderson off of LTIR, they'd need to clear off $1.35 million in cap space in order to do it. Or they can just wait for the playoffs. And like we've already said, salary cap doesn't matter in the playoffs. Which in that case, it just screams that he's staying on LTIR for the rest of the regular season. But the Maple Leafs are not going to handcuff themselves with this. This is just true of the situation right now. If they were going to make more deals, maybe a roster player is involved in those deals. Um, maybe they place a guy in on waivers a little bit later on. Nobody, nobody knows. This is just true of the situation right now. And by knowing Kyle Dubas and Brandon Pridham and how they operate with the salary cap... They're not the Vancouver Canucks and Jim Benning, okay? They're not going to get handcuffed by this. And no one can prove anything otherwise because there's no league doctors. There's no such thing as that. It's all team doctors. That's what the Lightning are doing with Kucherov. That's what the Panthers will probably do with Ekblad. If they add a lot at this year's trade deadline, that's what the Canadians will more than likely do with Brendan Gallagher. It does not matter if those players are actually injured or not. They just have to agree 
to say that, yeah, I'm injured. In the case of Fred, it's, it's a couple of weeks, man. He's played a lot of games the last couple of years. Um, like I said before, I would rather a cold Frederick Anderson going into the playoffs than a Frederick Anderson who is not 100% healthy. And what's the NHL going to do about it? Launch an investigation? What are they going to do? Time travel? Back to when the Leafs first did this to say, aha, he actually wasn't injured? No, that's, that's not possible. It's Fred's word against theirs, and it's the team's word against theirs. That was the case when Boston Bruins owner Jeremy Jacobs stood up and complained when the Blackhawks did it in 2015, and the Blackhawks were basically like, lol, go away. So I'm not saying that another trade is coming. I'm just saying that by doing this, it gives them options. And we love options here on this channel. And Riley Nash this season is a hell of a third or fourth line center. Because at worst, he's centered up in the playoffs. And at best, this allows them to move a guy like Alex Kerfoot for a different type of player in, let's say, a hockey deal. This guy's good. This guy's a good defensive bottom six centerman. And by the way, you want to talk about a guy who plays nothing but defensive zone shifts? That is Riley Nash. And he does it while almost being about even in terms of the shot attempt share, which is ridiculous. And the reason why the Maple Leafs are able to acquire a player like this for a seventh is because they're doing the salary cap shenanigans. So the Columbus Blue Jackets didn't have to retain any salary on this guy. The seventh turning into a conditional sixth, I believe, if he plays half the games in the playoffs that the Maple Leafs play in, I think, I don't know doesn't matter the sixth or the seventh whatever it ends up being is given to the blue jackets because riley nash is a decent player the reason why it's not a third or a fourth is because the maple leafs are taking on the entire financial commitment i think that's everything i think that i've got it but if i'm wrong i'll upload a correction video so i think that i got that right Hopefully, hopefully I've included all the relevant information in here and hopefully I've done a good enough job explaining it. And if I haven't, you can always leave a question in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, but if I can't, doing this, doing this assignment. So make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember if Kyle Dubas makes another trade tonight, well then I guess my professor is just gonna have to be understanding of me handing in the assignment link because we're going to have to do another video.